you mentioned earlier that um, Berkshire's shoe business was great, but that other shoe businesses were not so good. Uh, what are the uncertainties of the global brand leaders that the Berkshire seems to like? Um, they like Coke and, and Gillette. Um, the global brand leaders in the shoe business being Nike and Reebok. What are their uncertainties in terms of long-term competitive advantage, um, business economics, consumer behavior, and the other risk factors that you mentioned in the annual report this year? Thank you. So you're really asking about the future prospects of Nike and Reebok? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know that much about those businesses. We do have one person in this audience at least who owns a lot of uh, Reebok, but uh, I, I, I'm not expressing a negative view in any way on that. I just, I don't understand that the, I don't understand their competitive position and the likelihood of permanence of their competitive position over a 10 or 20 year period, as well as I think I understand the, the position of Brown and Dexter. That doesn't mean I think that it's inferior. It doesn't mean that I think that we've got better businesses or anything. I, I think we've got very good businesses, but I, I'm not, I, I, I'm not, uh, I haven't done the work, and I'm not sure if I did the work, I would understand them. I think they are harder to understand, frankly, and to develop a fix on than, than, than our kinds. But they may be easier for other people who just have a better insight into that kind of business. Some businesses are a lot easier to understand than others. And Charlie and I don't like difficult problems. I mean, we, we uh, if something is, is hard to figure, you know, I mean, we, we'd rather multiply by three than by pi. I mean, it's just easier for us. <laughs> Charlie, you have any? Well, that is such an obvious point. And yet so many people think if they just hire somebody with the appropriate la uh, labels, they can do something very difficult. That is one of the most dangerous ideas a human being can have. Uh, all kinds of things just intrinsically create problems. The other day I was dealing with a problem and I said, this thing, it's a new building. I said, this thing has three things I've learned to fear. An architect, a contractor, and a hill. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, if you go at life like that, I think you at least make fewer mistakes than people who think they can do anything by just hiring somebody with a label. We've come, excuse me, go ahead. Sir. You don't have to hire out your thinking if you keep it simple. No. You don't have to do, we've said this before, but you don't have to do exceptional things to get exceptional results. And some people think that if you jump over a seven foot bar, that the ribbon they pin on you is going to be worth more money than if you step over a one foot bar. And it just isn't true in the investment world at, uh, at all. So it, uh, you can do very ordinary things. I mean, what is complicated about this? But, you know, we're $3 billion pre-tax better off than we were a few years ago because of it. There's nothing that I know about that product or its distribution system, its finances, or anything that really hundreds of thousands or millions of people aren't capable of, uh, that they don't already know. They just, they just don't do anything about it. And similarly, if, uh, if you get into some complicated business, you can get a report that's a thousand pages thick and you've got PhDs working on it, but it doesn't mean anything. It, uh, you know, what you've got is a report, but you, don't, it, you won't understand that business, uh, what, what it's going to look like in 10 or 15 years. The big thing to do is avoid being wrong. That, uh, there are some things that are so intrinsically dangerous. Another of my heroes is Mark Twain, who looked at the promoters of his day, and he, he said, a mine is a hole in the ground owned by a liar. And that's the way I've come to look at projections. I mean, basically, I can remember Warren and I were offered $2 million worth of projections once in the course of buying a business, and the book was this thick. And, for nothing. And, and, and we were given it for nothing, and we wouldn't open it. You know, uh, we'd, we'd almost pay $2 million not to look at it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I, 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 I do not understand why any buyer of a business looks at a bunch of projections put together by a seller or or, or his agent. Or his agent. I, I mean, it, it, you can almost say that it's it's uh, it's naive to think that that has any utility whatsoever. We just are not interested. If we don't have some idea ourselves of what we think the future is, to sit there and listen to some other guy who's trying to sell us the business or get a commission on it, tell us what the future is going to be, it, 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 like I say, it, it's very naive. Yeah, and five years out. Yeah. We, uh, we had a line in the report one time, don't ask the barber whether you need a haircut. And uh, <laughs> it's qu quite applicable to projections of, uh, by sellers of businesses. My question concerns Nike. Nike is a company experiencing some short-term problems, but is a great company with an excellent track record. Phil Knight is similar to Bill Gates in the respect that he's a marketing genius and, has, and is a very hard worker. Making sneakers is a very simple business with high margins. How do you view Nike and what do you think of the company? Well, I think Phil Knight is a terrific operator. I think, and, and he's, a, he's, a, he's a competitor. He's got a lot of money in Nike, but as, in terms of what we uh, think of the stock, you know, we, we keep all of those views to ourselves pretty much. Uh, do you ever have any plans or would you be interested in buying a professional sport team or sports equipment manufacturing company? I owned a quarter of a major minor league team, but it's not responsible for my position on the Forbes 400. <laughs> the, uh, the answer to your question about buying a sports team is no. Uh, uh, in fact, if, if Charlie and I, if you read that either one of us is buying a sports team, it may be time to talk about successors. <laughs> the, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, we are, we, we do, we, sports equipment has generally not been a very good business, although, you know, obviously Nike's done in, in, incredibly well in its overall operation, but, but we own Spalding, uh, we own Russell, and, you know, Spalding has been around a long, long time, A.G. Spalding, I forget when the hell he was, I think he was trying to take baseball to the rest of the world back in the, I don't know, 1880s or something like that, but it's, Generally speaking, if you look at the people that have made golf equipment, golf equipment, footballs, helmets particularly, uh, baseball gloves, baseballs, it's not been a particularly uh, profitable business. And certain aspects of it, like helmets, you know, are, the last thing Berkshire should do is own a helmet company. That, uh, uh, a helmet company should be owned by some guy that owes about a million dollars and doesn't have a dime to his name because, uh, you know, he is not going to be a target. Uh, and we would be the ultimate target. That's the reason we used to be interested in, but we had no interest in, and we got offered the chance to buy the whole place. And the idea of owning a business that provided guards at airports, you know, when anything that went along, you know, you're going to say that it was the guard's fault. And here's this super rich corporation around there that, uh, that is a perfect target. I mean, a, a guard company at airports, uh, again, should be owned by somebody whose net worth uh, does not get out to two figures. Uh, so so that, that you won't see much of us in the sports arena now. But, uh, Charlie, are, are you looking at the uh, Clippers or? <laughs> now I'm worried that he is. No. <laughs> Whatever Warren thinks about sports teams, ownership, I like it less. Okay, Andrew. Warren Buffett emphasizes the importance of understanding the long-term competitive position of a business rather than relying on projections or the opinions of others. He highlights how some industries, like sports equipment, have historically been challenging for profitability. Buffett's advice is clear. Focus on what you know well, avoid complexity, and don't be swayed by short-term trends or external predictions. It's a reminder that in investing, simplicity and caution often lead to better outcomes.